Good morning, everybody, and welcome to today's Sunday celebration. And I'm sure you're all aware today is a very special day for the mummies in the world. Yes, today is the day where we honour the mums and tell them and show them how much we love them. We've got a lovely Sunday celebration lined up for you where we're going to be making flowers and we're going to be hearing a story and we're going to be having a song. So up first, we have Julia with her story. Thanks, Julia. Hello. Um, today we're celebrating Mothering Sunday and our story today is about Hannah, the mother who prayed. Hannah lived in the country of Israel many years ago. She was married to a good man called Elkanah and they lived in the town of Ramah. In those days some good men had more than one wife. Elkanah had another wife called Peninnah who had several sons and daughters. Hannah's greatest sorrow was that she did not have a child. How she longed to have a baby son of her own. And there's Hannah and she's looking very sad. Every year Elkanah took his family to Shiloh to worship the Lord God in his temple. God wants us also to worship him both in church and at home by singing praise to him, reading the Bible and praying to him. Each year at Shiloh, Elkanah gave gifts to all his family. Penina and her boys and girls all received a gift, but Hannah received a special gift because he loved her best of all. So there that they all are on their journey. No gift could make Hannah forget that she did not have a child of her own. Penina mocked her for not having any children. This made poor Hannah feel even more miserable. You may know just how Aunt Hannah felt. It can be very upsetting to have someone teasing you. Hannah could not eat her food and often cried. Not even Elkanah, who loved her so much, could comfort her. Why are you crying? he asked her. Why do you not take something to eat? Why are you so sad? Am I not better to you than ten sons could be? But Elkanah could not really help her with her problem. Hannah knew that the only one who could help her was the Lord God. And there she is, feeling very sad and Elkanah trying to comfort her. One day, when they were in Shiloh, Hannah made her way alone to the temple of the Lord. She felt very sad in the temple. She wept and prayed and told all her problems to the Lord. In her prayer, she made a promise to the Lord. If you will remember me and give me a baby boy, I will give him back to work for the Lord for all his life. While Hannah was praying, Eli the priest was sitting on a seat by a pillar of the temple. There's Hannah praying and Eli sitting watching her. He noticed Hannah and watched her closely. He thought she looked very strange. As she prayed in her heart, her lips moved, but no sound came from her mouth. So Eli thought she had drunk too much wine. He went to Hannah and said to her, How long are you going to be drunk? Stop drinking so much wine. Hannah turned to him and said, I am a very sad woman. I have not been drinking wine at all. I am in great distress and have been telling the Lord all about it. Eli realised his mistake and said to her, Go away in peace and may God give you what you have asked for. I hope you always think kindly of me, Hannah replied. Hannah believed that God would answer her prayer and she went back to the house very happy indeed. She did not look sad anymore. She felt so much better that she began to eat her food again. What a difference it had made to Hannah to tell her problems to the Lord God. Today too, you can take your problems to God. You can tell him all your worries because he asks you to do so. He promises to help you if you trust in him. That's a good thing to know, isn't it? The next day, Elkanah and his family rose early in the morning. They went to the temple to worship the Lord. Then they set off back to their own home in Rama. After some time, Hannah had a baby, son of her own, and she was very happy indeed. God had answered her prayer. Hannah did not forget that she had asked God for this baby, for she called him Samuel, and Samuel means asked of God. And there's Hannah 
with her baby Samuel. The next time that Elkanah went to Shiloh to worship the Lord, Hannah did not go with him. I will stay at home with Samuel, she said to her husband. I will take him to Shiloh when he is a little older. Then I will give him to the Lord and he will stay there always. Elkanah agreed with Hannah. Yes, he said, you do what you think best. Wait until Samuel is old enough. So when Samuel was a little older, Hannah took him to the house of the Lord in Shiloh. Hannah went to Eli the priest and reminded him of their last meeting. I am the woman that you saw praying here to the Lord. I prayed for this child and the Lord gave me what I asked for. I am now keeping my promise and returning the child to work for the Lord. There's Hannah with Samuel, now he's a bit older, and there's Eli, the priest. So Samuel stayed in the temple with Eli from that day on. He learned to help Eli, who was an old man, with many little tasks. He also worshipped God in the temple. We must not think that as only grown-up people who have to worship God, boys and girls also must worship him. When Hannah was in trouble, you remember, she prayed to God to help her. Now that she was happy, she did not forget God. She prayed again, telling him how happy and joyful she felt. She knew that God was holy and great and strong. She also praised God and said, There is no one so great as God. God has made the whole world and rules over everyone. Hannah knew that God had given her a son, she wanted to praise him for his goodness. You should remember to pray to God not only when you are in trouble, but when you are happy too. You should praise God for all his goodness. God wants you to thank him for all his good gifts to you. He has given you life, a home and food, but the greatest gift of all is his son, Jesus. God gave his only beloved son, Jesus, and all who believe in him will be saved from their sins and live forever with him in heaven. Elkanah and Hannah went back to Ramah. They left Samuel at Shiloh with Eli. He worked for the Lord there, just as his mother had promised. There they are, waving to Samuel and Eli as they go back home. Each year after that, Hannah still went with Elkanah to Shiloh to worship in the house of the Lord, how she would look forward to seeing Samuel again. Every time she went, she brought him a little coat that she had made for him. There you can see one of the coats. Hannah willingly gave her son to work for God, but she was not left without any children at home. God rewarded her by giving her more children, three boys and two girls. You will remember that Hannah's prayer for her son was that he would serve the Lord in the temple. This prayer was answered too. Day by day, Samuel served God in the temple and was a true servant of God. God soon showed that he loved Samuel. One evening, Eli, who was now nearly blind, went to bed as usual. After he'd finished his tasks, young Samuel also went to bed. As he lay there, all of a sudden, he heard a voice calling his name. He thought that it was Eli who was calling him. Here I am, he answered as he ran to Eli. You were calling me. I did not call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed again. Again he heard someone calling, Samuel! Samuel rose again and went to Eli. Here I am, he said, for you did call me. I did not call you, said Eli. Lie down again. God was calling to Samuel, but Samuel did not know this. Samuel heard the voice again calling his name for the third time. Here I am, for you did call me, he said to Eli. This time Eli knew that the voice that Samuel was hearing was the voice of God. Go and lie down, Eli said to Samuel, and if he calls you again, say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. God did speak to Samuel again. He told him that Eli's sons were very wicked. Eli did not punish them or stop them, so the whole family was to be punished. Samuel lay in bed thinking about what had happened. In the morning, he rose as usual to open the big doors of the temple, but was afraid to tell Eli what God had said to him. And there's Samuel opening the doors of the temple. But Eli called for Samuel. 
and asked him what God had said. Do not hide anything from me, he urged the boy. Samuel told him everything. Eli's humble reply was, It is the Lord. Let him do what he seems best to him. Hannah's son served the Lord as a young boy, and when he grew up, he continued serving the Lord. Samuel became an important man of God, all in answer to his mother's prayers. Hannah loved God so much that she did not keep her son for herself. She was a woman with a problem, but she prayed to God about that problem. God helped her. God is still the same today. He tells you to take your problems to him. It's today's Mothering Sunday, and I expect you've um, written your mum a card or made a card um, and given her a present. But I thought perhaps there's something else that you might like to do for her today. So um, I've made some flowers. This one I've coloured and st stuck some bits and pieces on. Um, I've got some templates here. Um, these are tulips and then it's a daisy. So um, I've got all sorts of um, craft bits that I collected, which I expect you probably have too, and you can have a look around the house. I've got some wool and some sticky shapes. So um, I thought if we make um, this daisy, so if I stick some things on there so you can have, have a look. So we have a white pom-pom in the middle. And then perhaps use your felt, I've got a yellow felt tip pen here, so because daisies are normally yellow, aren't they? I'm sure you can um, have a look around and see what you've got to make your mum some things. And I've also written on there a Bible verse which says, thanks for showing me how to grow, because obviously flowers grow and your mums look after you by giving you food and drink, which helps you grow. So it's just a reminder of um, how, how our mums help us and that we're grateful. I'm just writing on here, thanks for showing me how to grow. And it's found in the book of the Bible, which is Proverbs 31, verse 28. So if you want to have, have a look, so there we are. I'm sure you'll be able to um, colour your flower much easier, the nicer than mine. But um, on there I put, thanks for showing me how to grow, Proverbs 31, verse 28. And the one I made earlier, I've made a hole with a hole punch and um, put some wool there so your bum could perhaps hang it up somewhere. Or if you don't want to hang it up, she could perhaps stick it on her fridge. Or you might like to make lots of flowers because mums love flowers on Mothering Sunday. So I hope you all have a good day together and um, see you again soon. Bye. Thank you so much, Julia. And I've just been thinking as the sun's come out, did you know there's seven billion people on this earth? Seven billion. And what are the chances that you've managed to get such a loving and caring mum. It's amazing. I'm so thankful to God for giving me my mum. So we're gonna thank God in this next song. So come on, up on your feet and let's worship.
now we're going to have a little prayer to thank God for our beautiful mums. Dear Lord, thank you God for every mum in this world. Thank you that mums work so hard to keep us safe and to keep us happy and to keep us well. Lord, please help them in the future. It may be hard for them having me, my brothers and sisters, and they could get stressed. So please, Lord, help me help my mum. Show her love and be kind to her. Thank you for all the mums around the world. And please give them strength. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, guys, I hope you've enjoyed today's Sunday celebration. And again, another message to the mums. You are brilliant. I know it's not been easy over the last few months. And I hope, children, that you've been helping your mum around the house and you will continue to do this the rest of your lives. God bless you all. Take care and we'll see you next week.